Let's talk about clustering columns. Now the other half of the primary key besides partition keys are clustering columns. So these are combined to make your data model awesome. How do you work with them? Clustering columns are an important part of the data model because they define certain parts of the sorting and uniqueness. So if you look at this diagram, we have the video table again, just like we saw in a previous example. But this time, instead of just having year, which would not be unique, we need to add name to make it unique. So year plus name makes these records unique. But hold on, if year is the partition key and name is the clustering column, what does that mean? What does that do to my data model? Now, if you look at the placement of the primary key, I mentioned this before, I'll mention it again and keep mentioning it. Primary key is partition key, then clustering column, that's the order. The clustering column could be zero or more columns after the partition key, but you can have many of them. And how many you have is really dependent on your data model and what you're trying to do with the query. So let's get into that. So to understand the query, let's look at this diagram of how the storage engine works with this data model. So if the year is a partition key, that means that each one of those years could be potentially stored on a different node. So the partition key gives you node locality. Good, that puts us in a single server. But then the clustering column denotes some sort of order. So if you see like 2014 is a year, there are actually two movies that fit inside of 2014. There's Interstellar and Mockingjay. Now those two things fit into the same partition but the clustering column gives them uniqueness, but it also imparts some sort of sorting order. And that sorting order goes directly into the storage engine, as you can see here. I is sorted before M. Keep this in mind every time you do a data model and use a primary key. You're actually imparting some knowledge to the storage engine to give you a leg up on the query. If I was to compare these side by side, you could see that when we just had a primary key of ID, which is just a partition key, and we have a primary key of year plus title, now you can see the differences on the storage engine. The partition key one, two, three, each one of those values could be on a separate node, but there's only one record per partition key or one row. In the case where there's multiple values where we have a partition key and a clustering column, now you have multiple rows inside of a single partition 2014, and 2015 only had one movie in it, so it only has one row. But the storage engine is very different, and the way that data model is expressed in the query is very different as well. Ordering is really the important thing in the clustering column. This is what imparts order to the values you store in your data model. Let's look at this diagram. You have your clustering column values inside of the same partition, but that order, as I mentioned before, Interstellar, then Mockingjay, and this is ascending order. This is in the collating order for UTF-8. So I goes before M. The name imparts some sort of sorting. Now, if you think of all the different types and the kind of ordering that you can get from them, for instance, an integer or a date, now you're starting to work with data and ordering the data before you do any work with it. So thinking about order of clustering columns, what if you wanted to control the order? Well, in this slide, what you can see is that the order in this case is descending. You can control that, and there's ways you can do it inside of the table declaration. But the order ascending, descending can be useful for different types of models. For instance, with numbers, maybe you wanna have a descending. How we control that order is by the clustering order by clause in your table creation. If you look at this table, the primary key of year and name, the clustering column being name, if we didn't add the with clustering order by, name would just be ascending based on the collating order for UTF-8. But since we wanna control it, with clustering order by, name, descending, what you're saying here is that that clustering column, no, 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 I wanna control the order. I wanna make it descending. So when you insert data into this table, that data is gonna be sorted properly on disk and it'll be in descending order. Think about this as a pre-optimization for your query. If I need it in my query in descending order, when I go get it from the Cassandra node, it'll be preformed, already sorted, and ready to use. So querying clustering columns. Now there's a bit to this, and this is important to note because you can get tripped on this really quickly. 
if you look at the diagram here, we have the select star from videos, and now we have a couple of where clauses. We have the year and name being used. This is important to know. The year 2014 is a partition key. You always should include the partition key in your queries. Why? Because you need that node locality. If you have a thousand node cluster, where are you gonna find it? Well, year 2014 means it's gonna get hashed to a certain node. That node will have the data. The next part, and name equals mocking J. This will give you the next part of locality. Once we get to the partition 2014, we can go to the disk. And that disk is gonna be looking at the order of those records inside that partition. Name equals mocking J. We scan to mocking J, return that record. So it's a very efficient operation. We go from partition, where is it in the cluster, to using clustering columns to where is that data inside of the file. This could be potentially in one SS table or multiple, but we know that based on the partition key, we have a pretty good idea of where it is in a disk. If you go back and watch the module on read path, you'll see where this is important. This is how you're controlling how the read path can be optimized inside of your data model. Now in the case where I wanna do something like a range query, looking at this diagram, we now have year 2014, that's our partition, but name is greater than or equal to. That greater than or equal to, since we're using a UTF-8 sorting order, is going to be lexically greater than. So Interstellar being before Mockingj means that I will see Interstellar in any record after the letter I. This can be useful, especially in something like a time series data model, where you wanna to go to a certain time and then traverse all the other times after it. Now the order of clustering column fields that you add to the primary key, if you add more than one, the rules are pretty simple. If you're going to use it in a query, you have to follow the order in the primary key. So if you add yet another clustering column, say runtime, you'll need to add the name as part of the where clause first and then runtime. If you query runtime outside, like not include name, then it's not gonna work as good. And the reason being is because it doesn't know the order to search in. The order has to be preserved from how you wrote it in your primary key. So name was first, runtime was second, that's the order that you have to query it with. Now, ways to get around that are by using something like a secondary index, or in the case of DataStacks Enterprise Search, but those are more advanced topics for later. So let's try this. Let's go do an exercise on clustering columns and see how they work in real life. 